everybody. Welcome to this week's Design Cinema. This is Fein Zhu speaking. And uh, this week we're going to be painting some uh, landscapes, kind of similar to the ones I've done a few episodes back with those sci-fi alien planets where we did three paintings. Uh, in this episode, I'll also do three paintings. Um, the main difference here, though, is the theme. I'm going to do something a little bit more fantasy-based that takes place, uh, fantasy in terms of uh, kind of like the RPG games and those type of uh, landscapes, um, and also takes place on a planet that's very similar to uh, Earth instead of some uh, foreign uh, gases planner or something crazy like that um, anyways uh, for now let this let um, not let this painting kind of uh, run and I'll talk about the uh, the design behind it and then we'll have plenty of time to go over the technical stuff because all three paintings are going to use the same technique uh, but just very quickly you can see that I'm just blocking all the stuff out and this is going to be a very important issue that I will address uh, shortly but first let's talk about the landscape painting itself now there's going to be a lot of tutorials on the internet as well as in books about landscape painting especially the traditional kind that you see in the oils and those type of uh, beautiful paintings you see in the Louvre and those museums now the core difference between those kind of landscape painting and the one I'm showing you guys here is is the actual subject matter itself. Um, when you take a look at traditional lands landscape paintings, they're uh, usually done from real life. You know, uh, you find a great sunset of great scenery and you paint it. In entertainment, however, we have to do uh, something uh, sort of similar to compression. Uh, because if you guys think about a video game or even a film, what they try to do is they try to take all the elements of the real life, all the cool things in the mountain or a forest and, and all those kind of neat things that you like about those environments and compress it into a very small little world. So even games like Oblivion, um, you know, Fallout, uh, maybe Just Cause and these games that have very big open world, essentially the world is actually not that big. You could, you could walk across, like for example, Oblivion, I think you could walk across from one city to another in, in less than probably five to ten minutes, something like that. And of course in real life that's impossible possible to walk from one major you know, town or city to another one within 10 minutes. Um, but what they're doing is they're trying to create a sense of all the cool things you can experience in a world that has mountains and has caves and has waterfalls and, and volcanoes and all that, but doesn't require the player to travel for two months to reach the next location, which in real life it would. Um, so in, in a painting like this, we're doing these kind of um, landscape establishing paintings for a game or a film. We try to do the same thing where in a single painting, we try to contain as much elements as we can uh, and also all the cool factors as you can, like for example, cool clouds, cool, cool architecture, um, mountains, all those kind of things we, we try to put into the single painting. Like in this case, we have these snowy mountains that are very big in scale that you tend to see in uh, uh, these kind of Lord of the Rings and these type of films. Um, and then we have this kind of green grass landscape, this flowing river. You know, all the stuff in, that exists in real life, except we kind of exaggerate everything to, to bring it into an entertainment type of uh, uh, world. Because in real life, things are, things are cool, but if you really try to bring real life stuff into a video game, you find that it's actually quite boring and might not be as entertaining. Um, because sometimes in real life, perhaps there is a cool mountain, but uh, just down the street, I mean, or maybe just a few feet from that is just something that's quite boring, maybe just a plain uh, grass field or something, which wouldn't make for good entertainment. Um, so here we're trying to compress all that uh, again into one location. So let's go back to the technical aspect of this. So the initial blocking is the most important and later towards the end of this tutorial I'll show you guys why that's so important. Uh, it's about the roughness, not about the details, but the composition, the lighting, and the atmosphere. Once you get those elements correct, your painting is essentially done. So this thing here has been sped up, uh, sped up a little bit, but in real time this painting up to this point is only about less than 20 minutes in, uh, possibly less than that, maybe 15 minutes. So it's very, very quick because at this point, it's all about blocking things in. Not, I'm not worrying if the paint strokes are perfectly clean. I'm not worrying if this, you know, things are exactly perfect. But what I'm worrying about is, does it look right? Is the composition good? Do, do I feel the sense of uh, depth in these paintings? Once that stuff is done, we can always then spend time making the details. Um, once you get the overall, I'll show you later again, uh, when we shrink these down, right, check these when you shrink them down, essentially a finished painting and one that's very, very loose like this, they look exactly the same when you shrink them to a tiny little thumbnail. And that's when you can tell that the initial thumbnail is done relatively correct because without details, it still reads. Um, keep in mind that details does not save a painting. You know, even though we could, we could render rock for, for 10 hours, but rock is not going to make this painting good. It's going to be the overall feel of the painting. And just like in real life, when you look around a landscape, your eye tends to catch a little detail here, a little detail there, but you cannot focus on everything at once. And if you make a painting extremely detailed where every single rock is rendered, it actually makes the painting quite dead. Uh, it will appear very, very stiff. Uh, so you probably 
you guys heard that term being used before on, on works. Um, so at this point, see how I shrink the image down because I don't want to focus on details. I want to focus on the big, ginormous shapes, the big geometries. You know, is it a triangle? Is it a square? What is that? And try to you know, knock those things in. Um, so the clouds, I know I'm going to detail this up, so I'm not going to worry about clouds too much because I'm going to use some uh, some detail and photography that I took similar to the tutorial uh, last last episode, which deals with the UFO attack, where we use some photo elements. But for now, everything is painted raw, just the uh, chalk brush, nothing else. And uh, you guys see that we started this painting even without any line drawing. So it's a pretty raw approach, but uh, you know, sometimes you don't need to have a line drawing to start these things. As long as you have a good idea in your head, then just start blapping the paint. Uh, I actually find sometimes doing a line drawing before a painting uh, could actually uh, restrict your ideas because a painting sometimes want to find the happy accidents the, the paint strokes on the page creates forms like clouds in the sky you can see certain shapes but and if you restrict yourself with a line drawing to start sometimes those shapes could be hidden from you um, so here I also flip the canvas you see me doing this for all the paintings I'll do I'll be doing uh, flipping the canvas allows you to check for composition and checks for mistakes and also lets your eye pretty much see something completely different um, the biggest thing I use it for is to check composition because if you flip and everything feels like it's all wobbly or to the side of something, then you have a composition problem because composition generally works upside down, left to right. It doesn't matter. Any read, a balanced composition will work. So that's why I flip the canvas constantly. And in Photoshop, there's just go to edit and flip canvas or something like that. You'll flip all your layers and everything together. So it's quite convenient. So that one, I leave it at that state. I'm going to start a second one. Um, so let's go back and talk about the landscape. So yeah, so games, you know, those games like Skyrim, Oblivion and stuff, uh, they require a lot of work similar to this, which in the, in the beginning of a project, I, I can imagine most of them start with landscaping because you have to establish the world before you establish your architecture, right? Because how would you know what the architecture is if you don't know what kind of world is living in? Because a very cold environment versus a jungle environment will have different architecture, different clothing. Um, so the first step is to establish the different worlds. And and in this case, I'm pretending I'm working on one of those similar projects, maybe some big MMO game or some, some uh, open world thing. And uh, the goal here is to draw three paintings that takes place in this game that are dramatically different from each other, that kind of uh, uh, tells a different story. So the color palette, the mood, the lighting is all very, very different. And in a game like uh, those kind of uh, games, they could actually capture that as you walk from one area to another, even though it's only a five minute walk, they could actually change the lighting, change the mood, and uh, make it co feel completely different. Um, so. That stuff we don't have to worry about too much. We let the 3D um, artists and programmers worry about that. But for now, we worry about can we capture the mood? Uh, because that's really important, especially if you're working in house for the art directors and uh, whoever's making these critical design decisions to know what you are trying to do within the first maybe one hour of even starting to painting. Okay. Uh, so here I'm, I'm just blocking things out. So these again didn't have a line drawing, but I sort of have a rough idea. Generally, when I approach these things, uh, I have about a 20-50% somewhere in that range of an idea but the rest I kind of let the painting uh, run itself so also here is about only 10-15 minutes in the entire painting is really pretty much set the mood of it the idea of it is there so we got these giant rock towers uh, that are sticking out of the ground and on the top we could then put some architecture which makes the players uh, well makes an interesting play point because from the ground level you can see those uh, buildings and then perhaps the player can make their way up to the top to, uh, to go inside them so this is a, uh, the last one with kind of the snowy mountainscape. This is taking the kind of the grass plains look approach. Okay, so painting away, still just the chalk brush. Uh, painting the rivers. <coughs> Okay, let's talk about tech technical stuff. So these paintings are pretty low res. I like to start these kind of paintings kind of, uh, very low. That way this, the Photoshop doesn't get slowed down at all. Uh, you also see I left the layer thing on. You can see this painting actually had no layers at all. I kind of just paint these roughs completely raw. Sometimes I go to two, three layers. That's about it. So you can see I start a new layer sometimes with atmosphere and these things. But as soon as it reaches two, three layers, I tend to collapse them down. Uh, just Again, just to kind of keep everything nice and loose and quick. Um, use some color adjustment to, uh, to balance our colors out. So these are about 1900, 2000 pixels across, very low. And then later I'll bring, in, um, bring them back in and res them up to about 5K size. Um, 
not too much detail, but still getting some of the major elements in there. So that way, when I start these paintings and go back to them later on, I know what the initial idea was. Because sometimes in production, you deal with a lot of these paintings at once. Maybe you're doing seven, eight of these a week. Um, and then uh, what I usually do is I start all the roughs in the beginning of the week, like Monday or Tuesday, after you have a design meetings uh, or a briefing from a client, uh, I tend to do all of them at one time, when the idea is still fresh in your head, right? Because sometimes when the clients talk to you, you already have the image of what they want, right? even during the phone conversation uh, or the email you read. Uh, so right away, you want to get these ideas down. It might be rough, just like this one you see here, but the idea is captured. Uh, I don't want to wait till the end of the week to do them. But the thing is, I want to do enough detail to remind myself what I was thinking uh, if I come back to this on Thursday to try to finish it by Friday. So that's the same idea here. So here's the third painting in the set. Uh, same thing. This one started a little rough. I actually had no idea what I was going to do for this one when I started it. Uh, I wanted a kind of a gloomy... Um, set because all the all the kind of these worlds have the snow mountains and the plains and then the, there's the volcano world except i want to kind of avoid the volcano thing which you which you get in pretty much all the rpg games um i want to do but something similar something that's not that nice and you know friendly in a way i guess when you go there you know this place is sort of dangerous um it's kind of maybe evil stuff live here right it's, that's why volcano stuff works so well because it just has that kind of a mystique about it so but i want to capture a similar feel um so here i just go hey let's make a maybe a beach or some kind of lake that has that kind of uh, sulfur effect to it. You know, maybe it's by the edge of a volcano. So it's not entirely uh, clean. It's not a blue river type of, uh, or blue water type of scenario, but more of a greenish yellow, sickly yellow color. And at distance, you have this big shape, which at this point, I'm not clear what it is, but later you'll see me uh, tr converting that into a, um, into a structure, uh, but still kept it in a fantasy world. I, I don't want these to go sci-fi. Uh, which is a good point. You know, the difference between sci-fi, fantasy, and real and everything, um, it's not really much of a difference at all. It's just the subject matter at all. Uh, that's about it. The, the approach to them are exactly the same. You know, how I paint these, uh, and I think to most professionals, it's all exactly the same. The subject matter shouldn't come into play at all. Otherwise, you limit yourself to the kind of job scopes you're able to take on. And uh, uh, clients generally don't like to work with freelancers who can only do one or two things, especially for, for us who do a lot of environment type of stuff. They want you to be as open as possible because these games can sometimes switch from sci-fi to fantasy you never know um, so you've got to be able to be very uh, versatile when it comes to that so you can see this is starting to take shape looks like it's on a beach of some kind uh, of a dried out river bank that is uh, maybe once a volcano or sometimes so the river is definitely not clean flipping the canvas again to uh, to continue the rough painting uh, so I shrink the uh, canvas down a lot see here it's not shrinking it's just zooming out right that way we can see everything small so we don't have to concentrate on the details and that's a very important fact to to keep in mind when the beginning stages of a painting is to keep stuff very very loose All right. the bigger picture is the most important and uh, I think I talked about this before um, but a paint is just a bonus uh, everything is about underneath the fundamentals is the key right and the uh, what I like to ch talk, talk to our students about is imagine you have a sports car, you know, like a Ferrari, or and, uh, and then you have uh, something like a Ferrari unpainted. It's a good car, right? Even with it when, when it's not painted. But you cannot take a different car, say uh, a Ford um, Escort or something like that, and apply Ferrari paint on it. And even though you do the best paint job in the world, it's not going to turn into a Ferrari. So that's exactly what digital painting sort of is as well. It's just a, it's a pretty thing on top of the fundamentals, right? It's about the design, your composition, and what's underneath the paint that counts. So what, by doing this step here, we're, we're essentially ignoring the paint. We don't care how the details goes. We care about the overall picture, right? And that's really essential in terms of design. So. So what I'm going to do here is uh, knock this stuff in, and then I'm pretty soon going to import in all three of them and just res them up and start the high res process. And then uh, we're going to do one of those kind of uh, like a cooking show thing where we're going to fast forward real quick to the finished result so you guys could, you don't have to watch. Uh, otherwise, it'll take forever to record because uh, one, the big ones took them about two and a half hours each to clean up. So uh, I didn't want to record that step. It'll take forever. And also, it's the same process as for example, the UFO uh, video, nothing different, just painting details, right? The, I felt like this is the most important step, these kind of rough-ins, these kind of establishing things, okay? So I'm about to finish this guy up. So uh, pretty much, you know, one way to check also, which is the same as uh, shrinking the image down, is just squint your eyes and check the values. If you squint your eyes, you should be able to make out things that are far, things that are uh, close up, what shapes are doing what, uh, you know, generally no confusion.
And in a video game context, they'll follow the same kind of rule because you don't want the players to get confused. Okay, so here's all three paintings. I'm going to res these up to about 5,000 pixels wide, which is still pretty low. Um, I generally work in about 8,000 pixels wide, uh, six to 8,000, somewhere in that range. Um, I can't be as low because I just, uh, I'm working uh, on my laptop here and this laptop could only take so much before the memory runs out. Um, so here I'm just starting to detail it out a little bit to show you guys how we start these. All right, so this is the actual resolution the final will be done at. Um, so it's about, I think it's not even 5,000, 4,800, something like that, uh, which is about uh, half the rest of the screen. So let's fast forward and uh, continue. All right, and now we are back. And just like a cooking show, the oven's going to go ding, and we're ready, and we have passed over six hours in time. So these uh, took about, yeah, two and a half hours each to uh, resolve, to finish, to a presentable state. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in and show you guys a little bit of what we did here. So this is about 5,000 pixels wide, and uh, even at this res, it's not the highest resolution, but at this res, you can still fit quite a bit of detail. So you can see I um, designed out this mountain here, this big, giant uh, uh, landscape thing here whatever I put a kind of ego head on top to give it a kind of interesting design so you got to think in a video game or entertainment context that this mountain if it's just a mountain it's kind of boring so let's convert it so it looks like a spine of a dragon um, or some kind of giant bird so there's a story that could be essentially evolved around this area uh, so I just scroll around a little bit to show you guys that all right, let's look at this one to one. So let's just leave it on this screen here. So essentially, the painting is exactly the same as the loose version, except the only thing that's changed is the detail level. And of course, I added some clouds. And these are these clouds here are actually from a photo that uh, that I took. But everything else is all just painted raw with a brush. Um, just more details than than before, and that's about it. So let me show you the other ones as well. This is the snowscape. Let's move to the uh, here's the uh, the green plains grass uh, rock formation painting All right, so same thing also more detailed I'll zoom in here to show you guys so here we inserted more clouds the same kind of clouds that uh, it's actually the same photograph as the other one except I kind of just manipulate a little bit too, so it doesn't look like a copy and paste um, and on top of these towers you can see there's some human ish things right I didn't really go in there and detail out the exact castle or whatever but hinted that this doesn't look natural the stuff up here uh, you can see one that's far away as well so some materials up there that are man-made and I'll zoom out again to get the entire picture so we've got a river that's running through uh, kind of very beautiful little environment a cool little world for the player to experience it's got some night light uh, blue haze just that very pretty environment that kind of epic scale type of thing when, when the player sees it it's uh, it feels very good for the eyes right because you can see very very far and it's definitely a friendly ish place um, that is not evil essentially so maybe this is a good place to put some of the friendly towns and those type of uh, uh, places into into the video game so let me show you the third one which is our kind of evil-ish world. So here it is. Let me zoom in. So this one, I converted that that uh, structure in the middle to be some kind of interesting uh, bone structure. So perhaps uh, this was once a volcanic lake, and it dried up, and these giant sculptures were actually creatures, uh, uh, dead ones, are uh, kind of uh, on the bottom. And the somebody came in there and kind of erected them up back up to be a building. So I thought that would be a interesting architecture that is definitely not sci-fi either so it still keeps within the fantasy realm but a little bit different than a traditional castle or a medieval village so that's the idea here so I'll zoom in a little bit you can see here that this is a some kind of strange animal maybe it's not even one maybe it's a bunch of different uh, skeletons combined together right that kind of stuff you don't have to worry too much because this is an entertainment context we could justify a lot of this kind of design decisions um, even uh, in, in the context of the game someone could explain that or you don't have to let the player make up their own mind right because it, it's still believable in some ways that this is buildable this is doable uh, in, in a fantasy world that is so let me zoom out a little bit more to show you guys right so here you can see I threw in some textures here and there not much some coral textures just some rock textures but uh, uh, still not a very 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 refined painting uh, but definitely presentable um, at this state right not loose anymore like how we uh, had it earlier and now I'm going to show you guys the uh, this little image here which is a comparison shot right the top here let me show you this one this image here is when we stop the fast forward, when we're still doing the fast forward part of the video. This is where we stop the roughness. And the bottom is our cleanup drawing, I mean the cleanup painting that is. So you can see the two essentially are exactly the same if we zoom these way, way out like this. So they're tiny now, especially if you watch on YouTube, they're probably very small. But you can see that the difference between the two, almost none. It's like 
probably 85 percent the same right the major difference is the cloud but the lighting the shapes the forms is all the same so it just shows you that how important it is to be able to capture the overall feel early on because the final nothing's changed the only thing that changes is presentation means if you print this out or have it in a resolution for your clients they have to be able to pick out the details right to see that what what you know to actually see what this place is about but for us for for us working this this top one is way more important because this is solves the entire problem the rest of the stuff is easy it's much easier to lay in details than to capture the overall so let me show you the other ones as well here is the uh, green landscape the before and down here is the after again if I zoom out you can see that they look pretty much exactly the same All right 85 percent nothing the color is the same the lighting is the same the forms are the same All right only change detail level that's it so you can see at this at this zoom out level I mean zoom in level you can see there's a lot more detail up here but essentially the same and then the third one is our kind of uh, creepy little world here so on top and the bottom zoom out and you'll see also that they're pretty much exactly the same so Actually, this one's really, really close. You can barely tell the difference. Um, but zooming in, of course, we'll see all the little details that make the bottom one presentable. Um, but yeah, so this is a sort of uh, a quick uh, demo demonstration to show you guys how to do some landscape, fantasy-ish landscape paintings. And I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And I think next week I'll go back to some line drawing stuff again. Uh, it's been a while since I drew something uh, line drawing-wise. So I'll show you guys some of that. And then perhaps we'll go back to painting again. So anyways, you guys have questions, make sure to ask in the YouTube channel. I'll try to get to those actually this week to answer some of you guys' questions. Um, uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you guys. Uh, let me leave it on one of these paintings before we uh, punch out here. I'll leave it on this one. Hey everyone, this is Fane with a quick, uh, quick update. Uh, if you want to grab the high-res images from these demos, you could get it at my new blog, which is at fanezoodesign.blogspot.com. And uh, I also updated my website, which is at fanezoodesign.com. So go ahead and check it out, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.